Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, pages 4 through 16. I don't know you. Don't know your last name. If you got brothers or sisters or mothers or fathers or cousins that be like brothers or sisters or aunties or uncles that be like mothers and fathers. But if the blood inside you is on the inside of someone else, you never want to see it on the outside of them. The sadness is just so hard to explain. Imagine waking up and someone, a stranger, got you tra strapped down, got pliers shoved into your mouth, gripping a tooth. Somewhere in the back, one of the big important ones, and rips it out. Imagine the knocking in your head, the pressure pushing through your ears, the blood pooling. But the worst part, the absolute worst part, is the constant slipping of your tongue into the new empty space where you know a tooth's supposed to be, but ain't no more. It's so hard to say, Sean's dead, Sean's dead, Sean's dead. So strange to say, so sad, but I guess not surprising, which I guess is even stranger and even sadder. The day before yesterday, me and my friend Tony were outside talking about whether or not we'd get any taller now that we were 15. When Sean was 15, he grew a foot, maybe a foot and a half. That's when he gave me all the clothes he couldn't fit. Tony kept saying he hoped he grew because even though he was the best ball player around here, our age, he was also the shortest. And everybody knows you can't go all the way when you're the smallest unless you can really jump like fly. And then there were shots. Everybody ran, ducked, hid, tucked themselves tight. Did what we've all been trained to do. Pressed our lips to the pavement and prayed the boom followed by the buzz of a bullet, ain't meet us. After the shots, me and Tony waited like we always do for the rumble to stop before picking, up, picking our heads up and poking our heads out to count the bodies. This time, there was only one, Sean. I've never been in an earthquake, don't know if this was even close to how they are, but the ground definitely felt like it opened up and ate me. Things that always happen whenever someone is killed around here. Number one, screaming. Not everybody screams, usually just moms, girlfriends, daughters. In this case, it was Letitia, Sean's girlfriend on her knees kissing his forehead between shrieks. I think she hoped her voice would somehow keep him alive and would clot the blood. But I think she knew deep down in the deepest parts of her downness, she was kissing him goodbye. And my mom, moaning low, not my baby, not my baby, why? Hanging over my brother's body like a dimmed light post. Number two, sirens. Lots and lots of sirens, howling, cutting through the sounds of the city, except the screams. The screams are always heard over everything else, even the sirens. Number three, questions. Cops flash lights in our faces and we all turn to stone. Did anybody see anything? A young officer asked. He looked honest, like he ain't never done this before. You can always tell a newbie. They always ask questions like they really expect answers. Did anybody see anyone? I ain't seen nothing. Marcus Andrews, the neighborhood know-it-all said. Even he knew better than to know anything. In case you ain't know, gunshots make everybody deaf and blind, especially when they make somebody dead. Best to become invisible in times like these. Everybody knows that. Even Tony flew away. I'm not sure if the cops asked me questions. Maybe, maybe not. Couldn't hear nothing. Ears filled up with the heartbeats like my head was being held underwater, like I was holding my breath. Maybe I was. Maybe I was hoping I could give some back to Sean, or maybe somehow join him. 